Hello everyone and welcome to the DP.Design Professionals YouTube channel. My name is Davina and today I will be talking about what to study for the practice management exam of the ARE 5.0. Just a little bit of background about me. My name is Davina and I have passed all of the 5.0 exams. I started taking the exams back in 2017 when the 5.0 version was released and I have since passed all of them. Um, I've passed my first test, which was the practice management exam in 2018. And at that point I had almost two years of professional experience. Um, this is just to say that you don't need a lot of professional experience in order to pass these exams and in fact I have friends who have passed with even less experience than that. So this is to really encourage you to take those exams and show you um, how quickly it can be done and that you don't really need a lot of professional experience. Um, like I said, I have taken all of the, pra all of the exams of the 5.0 and I have since given uh, my advice and study tips to a lot of friends and colleagues. And out of those friends and colleagues, I have about 20 plus people that have passed at least one of the ARE 5.0 exams. And about 10 of those people are actually licensed architects now. So this is really to show you and encourage you that you can do it. And... I'm going to help you along the way. So first things first, um, you always want to start with the NCARB resources as your primary resource Look when you're looking for what you need to study and what the content is for any of these exams. Um, NCARB posts the ARE 5.0 handbook online and before you really dig into it you need to make sure that you have the most recent ver version of the handbook. So if you're pulling it up online from NCARB's website most likely that is the most recent version but if you have it downloaded um, you can find the date in the bottom right hand corner here. This particular version is from July 2020 and at this time this is the most recent version of the handbook. Um, it's important to get the most recent version just because NCARB tends to update the handbook periodically with new resources um, or different questions or updating their um, overall test overview. Um, so make sure you have the most recent version before you really dig in. Next, you want to look for the test that you will be taking. So for this, we're focusing on the practice management portion. Here is a table of all the contents of the handbook, and we're going to be focusing on this section. At the first page of the practice management section of the handbook, it lays out the different topics that the exam covers, and at the very end, it gives you a list of references. So we're gonna go to that references page. And this is basically a list of resources and references that NCARB has compiled um, for recommended study resources. Um, as you can see here, I highlighted only three of them. These are the only three out of NCARB's resources that I studied from in order to pass the exams. Um, the references over here that I did not highlight, I did not read at all, and I was still able to pass the exams. So you can ignore those if you like. Of course, if you're feeling a little hesitant about some of the topics these cover, by all means, go ahead and look into them. Um, but by no means are they necessary. You can easily pass without reading these resources. Jumping in ahead to the last section of the ARE handbook is this ARE 5.0 references matrix. And here NCARB is saying that these are frequently used in the development of items for each division of the ARE 5.0. So what NCARB is basically telling us is they're using all of these resources and reference books in order to develop test questions. Um, so this is really just highlighting the importance of these references in your study process. 
Um, here again, we have the Architect's Handbook of Professional Practice, which I outlined on the last page. Um, and as you can see, it is used in every single one of the exams. So this is a very necessary reference book to purchase. Um, by no means should you be skipping over this book. Like This is an absolute, absolute necessary. Um, there are some other things on here, like the Code of Ethics. Um, it's only used in this one exam, so that's kind of another reason why I was saying you don't need that reference book. You can skip over it, um, and you can still do fine without it. So this is another great resource to see um, comparing your reference books now compared to um, what you will use in future tests. So moving on to the Architect's Handbook of Professional Practice. Like I said, this is a primary resource um, that you should definitely get and pay attention to. Um, this book is a bit pricey, but it is well worth the investment because like outlined in the last page, it will be used in every single one of the tests. And it's also a great resource once you're done with the test, working in the professional world. It's a great reference and has a lot of great information in there. Um, this book is over a thousand pages, but you do not need to read every single one of the pages in this book, especially for this one exam. This slide here outlines the sections of the architect's handbook that you should read. Um, Kevin from Plural Site posted this lovely PDF in the ARE 5.0 community for everyone to view. I have posted the link to this particular PDF down in the comments and you can also check out the ARE 5.0 community and Kevin's um, postings to find the link to it. Um, here in red are the sections that you will definitely want to study. If you study just these, you will probably be fine. These are the only sections that I studied when I was taking the test and I was able to pass. Um, if you are feeling a little fuzzy on some information or just want to learn more, go ahead and read the orange and then if you still want more information, go ahead and read the yellow. Um, but again, those are not necessary sections in order to pass this exam. Um, you will probably read those sections of the Architect's Handbook in future exams. So if you're short on time, just focus on the red portions. Um, a couple sections I would like to highlight in the Architect's Handbook are the financial um terminology and formulas and the legal structures. For me, these were some of the most difficult topics for me to understand and Architect's Handbook really does a great job of laying out what these things are and um, explaining them. Um, I've highlighted here the pages on which they fall and depending on the version you have or edition of the book you have, it might be slightly different. I believe the version I have is the 14th edition, so um, hopefully you'll be able to find what I'm talking about. These sections that I'm highlighting are um, portions in the Architect's Handbook that are in like a blue box. For the accounting terminology and formulas, it lays out all of the formulas that you need to know. I would memorize those by heart and really understand what they mean, how they work. Um, not only is it important for this test, but just understanding how a firm works in general. The legal structures, also it's outlined in Table 5.1. Um, the table that is in the book, I found kind of difficult to understand, so I translated it into my own table, which I put right here for your reference. I highly encourage you, if there's certain topics that you don't understand, try to reformat it into a way that your own brain can understand. And for me, this was a lot of tables and a lot of lists. So if you look at either the table in Architect's Handbook or my table and it still doesn't make sense, try to look at the information in both places and try to reorganize it into your own way. Um, that's a great study tip just for all of the tests and studying in general. Moving on to the other primary resources, um, the AIA contracts. So for the practice management exam, 
um, you will be tested on two contracts, the B101 and the C401. Both are the 2017 version. Um, this is one of the things that NCARB has updated since the first version of the ARE 5.0 the contracts and reference were the 2007 version. They have since updated to the 2017 version. This is another reason why you need to make sure you're referencing the correct and the latest version of the ARE 5.0 handbook. Um, NCARB will update um, small details like that. So for the B101, that's the standard form of agreement between the owner and the architect. Um, the, there is a version online, it's the 2007 version, and it comes with commentary, and it looks kind of like this document on the right-hand side of the screen. Um, there is no version 2017 that comes with commentary that I have seen, but the 2007 version is a great place to start if you're just kind of scared and or feeling overwhelmed by looking at a contract document. This is a great way to break it down and really understand what's going on. An even better resource is the Schiff Hardin Lectures by Michael J. Hanahan, and he is actually a law professor in Chicago. He used to post um, his lectures online for everyone to see and view. Um, I believe they have since been taken off of his website. So I was able to find um, a link in the ARE community of someone who had downloaded all of his, his past lectures and uploaded them for a Google Drive. Um, so I'm going to post the link to that uh, down below and so you can check out the Schiff Hardin lectures. Um, one thing to note is when you're listening to the Schiff Hardin lectures, they are a great way to understand the contracts and he really breaks it down section by section about, all right, this is what the contract says. This is essentially what it's saying. Um, they're great, great lectures. You do not li need to listen to every single one of them because they are very long. Only listen to the ones that apply to the AIA contracts. So in this case, I believe... It is only the B101. If I remember correctly, it's a two-part lecture. So give yourself a lot of time to sit down and really listen to the lectures. I highly suggest printing out the AIA contract in front of you, listening to the lectures, and making your own notes in the columns. Um, it's a great way to really understand what's going on in there. For the C401 contracts, that's a standard form of agreement between the architect and consultant. There is no version with commentary and um, there is no Schiff Hardin lecture associated with this contract. Um, but if you listen to the B101 and you understand what the B101 contract is really about, you will easily understand the C401. A C401 is basically the same thing as the B101, but just switching out who the contract is in between. So instead of the owner, it's the architect, and instead of the architect, it's the consultant. Um, so definitely listen to the B101, figure out what it really means, and then move on to the C401. Once you get a hold of the B101, the C401 should be very easy to pick up and understand. Next, moving on to third-party resources. Um, the two third-party resources that I recommend are the Ballast Review Manual and the Brightwood Review Manual. Um, these should not be your primary sources of studying just because they do not go into enough detail um, that is necessary in order to pass the exams, but I think they're a great starting point if you're looking to kind of get a general idea of what the exam is about and the content. Um, in my experience, the Ballast Review Manual was more of a general overview of the content, and the Brightwood Review Manual was more in-depth than Ballast. Um, when I was studying, Ballast only had the first edition. They have since come out with a second edition, um, so maybe it's better than it was before, but I think these are both two solid um, starting off points. Um, the great thing about Ballast is they have practice exams and practice questions, which are absolutely great and essential 
um, parts of my personal study routine. The practice exams especially really get you into that test-taking mindset and um, learning how to time yourself and think through problems. In my experience, though, the practice exams in Ballast were extremely difficult. Most of my friends scored in the 50% range um, or above, and I think that is really the cutoff range for if you can pass the actual exam. If you can score a 50% or higher on the Ballast practice exams, you should be good to go. Um, I have linked... um, Links to both the Ballast Review Manuals and Brightwood Review Manuals down below for your reference to make it really easy. Um, I believe you can buy the Ballast Review Manual, the practice exams, and practice questions separately, but I really suggest buying it all. Or if not, maybe your firm has a copy and you can save some money that way. But these are great resources. So to recap, always start off with the ARE 5.0 handbook. Make sure you have the latest edition, latest version of that. So you are referencing the correct reference books, AIA contracts, and whatever NCARB has updated. Um, Architect's handbook is another must, absolute must. Do not skip on that book. Uh, And of course, the AIA contracts. Architects Handbook and AIA contracts you really cannot do without. So make sure you understand everything in those and really have a good grasp of the content there. Um, Lastly is the third-party resources and study guides, Ballast and Brightwood. Um, A great way to kind of dip your toes into the test-taking world, the exam content and everything, but by no means should they be your only Um, study resources. They simply will not cut it. Um, I made that mistake the first time I took the practice management exam. I only studied Ballast and Brightwood and kind of skimmed through Architect's Handbook and a little bit of the contracts and that that did not cut it. I, I failed that first time so definitely pay attention to the Architect's Handbook and AIA contracts. A couple extra bonus extra study references is the ARE 5.0 community. I'm sure by now you've heard of it. Quizlet was another great option. Um, I personally use the free flashcard app. It's an open flashcard app where people can go in and make their own flashcard sets. So if you go in there and type in ARE 5.0 Uh, practice management. You'll find a bunch of different flashcard sets that other people have created that you can use to quiz yourself. So I use the app on my phone, on my daily commute, on the train. I would flip through the flashcards and it was really a great way to keep my memory refreshed and refresh on all of the content that I had been studying and learning. Um, Lastly is designer hacks. Um, They have a free and paid version. Um, I personally use designer hacks for their practice exams if I felt like I wasn't getting enough practice questions or needed to continue to get into that test-taking mindset. Um, This is one of the cheaper options out there um, if you want to get the paid version. Um, So I highly recommend if you're looking for more uh, practice exams, but don't want to spend a lot of money. Um, just so you have a reference of kind of what I did, um, this was a pretty accurate representation of my study schedule for the practice management exam. I took about a month of studying, and this was all while going to a 40-hour a week full-time job and going to social events and um, other things like that. So in week one, I went through the ballast study guide. Like I said, that was more of a general overview. Week two, I went into Brightwood. So it was again um, 
more covering all of the scope of the test, but a little more in-depth than ballast. So it's building upon that knowledge. It's a lot of review, but also teaching you some new things and going more in-depth on certain topics. After that, I read through the Architect's Handbook of Professional Practice, only reading the red portions that Kevin from, from Plural Site highlighted on his PDF. Um, and after that, I went into AIA contracts, um, reading the versions with commentary and going over the Schiff Hardin lectures. Um, once I covered all of the content, I took a ballast practice test and then went into review. Um, ballast does a great job of giving explanations and reasonings for their practice tests. So after you take the practice test, you can go into the answer key and read through um, their reasoning about why one answer is right and what, why another one might be wrong or why it's close but not quite there. Um, so definitely look through the practice test answer book. Um, in that last week, I reviewed everything or everything that I anything that I felt like I didn't understand well enough. So at this point, I was um, really trying to understand the legal structures more, trying to memorize those um, financial formulas, um, and really filling in the gaps wherever I thought I needed help based on um, how I scored on my practice exam. And then that last weekend, I would go through the ballast practice questions and review that and also take time to chill out before the exam day because that's four weeks of constant studying, uh, flashcards on my commute, studying during lunch, studying after work, doing flashcards on the way home, really studying a lot over the weekends, but also making sure I had balance in my life and going to social events and stuff. For me, that was key in order to keep my sanity and be able to get through these tests. Um, and then I always took my exams on a Monday just because my office paid for my exam time and the exam if I passed. So I was like, why not, why not get paid and take the test? Um, and that also helped me because then I had two full days before the test to really study, review, and focus my mind on the test material and content. So I don't know if you noticed, but there have been pictures of cute dogs all around these pages and slides. Um, and that is a section I like to call dog of the day. Um, there only reason for this is I like dogs and I thought it would make the content more fun and entertaining to get through because a lot of this content is very dry and boring. So I tried to make it as fun as possible with cute little dogs everywhere so you have something to look forward to. Uh, today's dog of the day is Walter. His Instagram handle is at the Walter show and here are some fun facts about him. His mom is actually an architect, and he was named after Walter Gropius. I've actually met Walter, and he is a very, very cute dog. Um, if you would like your dog or pet featured in a future video, you can email me at dp.designprof, P-R-O-F, at gmail.com. The email is right here. Just send in uh, some pictures and some fun facts about your dog or pet, and I will pick some out for future videos. And with that, thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe so you don't miss out on any future videos. I will be uploading them as quickly as I can because I know a lot of people are looking for this uh, material and there's not a lot of young people out there giving advice um, and I have done it I've passed all the tests all of the 5.0s and I've given this advice to a lot of my friends and colleagues and they have passed these exams so I'm hoping I can help out as many people as possible um, with that being said, don't, don't forget to comment as well. If there's certain topics that you would like covered in future videos, let me know in the comments and I'll be sure to put them on my list of videos to make in the future. Thanks again, everyone. See you next time.